Galatians 5, verse 1, um, looking at things that stand, things that fall, Paul says, uh, by the way, we, we had a great conference in uh, Pea Ridge, Arkansas, uh, some good people, had a young lady, I got to say this, I had a young lady come up to me. And um, I think Thursday night after the service, or Wednesday night, one of the two, and um, she said, thank you. She said, I wanted to tell you thank you for uh, teaching on depression and anxiety and things like that. She said, I have suffered with that for years. And... Um, so I was very blessed by that. Uh, she said, what you said has really helped me. And I said, thank you. I said, I'm not done teaching on that. It's a whole series. And I said, so watch for the new sermons that come out. Um, and I kind of explained a little bit about how the mind works. Uh, and I did this Friday night at the, at the very beginning um, that... We have an, an imagination, a whole side of our brain devoted to imaginations. Things that draw, we draw pictures of when we think about something. And it's, it's there for a reason. We, it, we're glad to have it. Um, but sometimes it draws a picture of something that's not true. And when we have depression or fear of something... Usually it's our mind telling us something, and sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not true. That sometimes it's there for a warning, to warn us of what could happen, which is a good thing. But sometimes it lies to us, and we believe the lie, and that strikes fear in us. And we have a, a bundle of nerves that come from the brain, and they attach to the heart, to the lungs, and to the bowels, and when we are in fear, it causes our heart rate to jump. It causes us to breathe heavy. It causes us to be sick to our stomach or have a burning feeling in our stomach. And it just, I mean, it just consumes us. And um, I said, so what I do, uh, there's a couple things I'll do. But one of the things that I do is to go to the scriptures uh, usually to the book of Psalms, but you can go to other places and just read what God said and believe what God said. And I said, that then counters the lies that your brain drew up, the picture that you have in your mind of what could go wrong or how things are going to, how bad things are going to turn out. You read the word of God and you believe it. And that's God telling you, don't worry about it. I'll save you no matter what. I'll still hold you with the saving strength of my right hand. It's God holding on to us more than us holding on to God. Amen? And so I was, I was really blessed by that. So uh, Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 1 again, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of of bondage. So um, we're going through the Bible and we're looking for things that fall. Uh, we mentioned uh, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. The Bible says the city of Jericho, the walls of Jericho fell. The statue of Dagon fell. Did it twice. It fell before the Ark of the Covenant. When they brought the Ark of the, the, Ark of the Covenant, had the Word of God in it had um, Aaron's rod that budded, it had the pot of manna in it, but it represented God's throne, God's mercy, God's uh, presence, and it fell twice before the very presence of God. Uh, what else did we talk about that has fallen? Anybody remember? Don't feel bad because I don't remember either, and I'm the one that preached it. So uh, Psalm 36, 12, up on the screen, you can follow along in your Bible or read there. 
There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. So what is it that separates us? And I've asked the question before, has anybody ever fallen? Yes. I fell 10 minutes ago, which is what I normally do. Uh, and I'm lucky, blessed, I guess, that I didn't destroy our projector. Uh, Lisa bought some um, furniture, real pretty Korean furniture at an antique store Friday. I let her, let her buy it. She, we, she saw it, and she said, I'm going to think about it. So I talked her into it all day. I said, you really want it. It was two different pieces. And I said, you got to get both of them together. You'll never see this anywhere again. So I talked her into buying it, and um, I'm thinking, sure as I walk in the house with this, I'm going to trip and fall and break it into a thousand pieces because it's what I do. Luckily, I didn't fall. Have I ever fallen? Have you ever fallen into sin before? Yes. The answer is yes. But the Bible says the just fall seven times, but they rise back up again. Okay? And that's the difference. When God is not going to save somebody, when he turns them over to their own iniquity, there the workers of iniquity are fallen, they are cast down, and shall not be able to rise. Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before fall. We like to shorten that verse, don't we? Because we always say it how. Pride goeth before fall. So we cut out like a whole half of that verse, but it goes like this. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. And you can see that in Lucifer because Ezekiel 28 says he was doing well until iniquity was found in him. And the iniquity that was found in him was pride. And it was because of his splendor. He was covered with Various, in fact, the Bible lists 10 stones that he was covered with. They were precious stones, gold and diamond and the beryl and the onyx and the sapphire. He was covered and adorned with these stones. I believe they were literally part of his body. He was, had these built into him. And all of these stones bear light. They bear light. They reflect and carry light. Hence the name Lucifer, which means light bearer. And so it was the pride of his heart that brought him down. Pride goes before destruction, haughty spirit before fall. Uh, and there it is. Isaiah 14, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Um, let me go to... Yeah, turn to Jeremiah 25. Turn in your Bible there, Jeremiah 25. That's Isaiah, Jeremiah. Comes right after Isaiah. Chapter 25. Let's read the context of what I have up on the screen so we get sort of the picture of what he's talking about. Man, we'd have to go all the way back to verse 19. In verse 19, he mentions the king of Egypt. Verse 20, all the mingled people, the lands of the Philistines. Good morning, Hyun Mi. You ought to see that Korean, it was Korean furniture. Yeah, it was beautiful. She got it all cleaned up uh, last night. Put some... Uh, Murphy's oil soap on it, cleaned it up real nice and everything. Boy, it's pretty. We just don't know where to put it now. So, uh, verse 24, all the kings of Arabia, the kings of the mingled people. Verse 25, all the kings of Zimri and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes. Verse 26, all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. 
Verse 27, Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall. And then he says, And rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. God says that he's going to cause them to drink, but not of wine or strong drink. It's going to be a spirit that they're going to drink in and it's going to cause them to fall. And so, no kidding, you have various, uh, I don't know exactly what to call them, teachers, but they are false teachers, prophets, but they are false prophets. Rodney Howard Brown, Kenneth Copeland, others who tell you to drink the Holy Spirit and when you're full of the Holy Spirit, it makes you drunk which is not true. It is not true. When you are full of the Holy Spirit, you are sober. It is the opposite of being drunk. Whereas Peter told us to watch and be, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The Bible over and over tells us to be sober, be sober, be sober. So their spirit is a false spirit and it causes them to be drunk. And, and there is a video that I've played this before of Kenneth Hagin. And at the time he was at Life Christian Church up on Highway 30, which uh, is not Life Christian Church anymore. It's part of that, that big faith church. It's one of their campuses. But anyway, Kenneth Hagin was there and he was telling everybody, be drunk, be drunk. And then he quoted scripture, or at least tried to quote scripture. He said, the Bible says, um, uh, be not drunk with wine, but be drunk, be filled with the Holy Spirit. He added to the scriptures. He added the phrase, be drunk, when he said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be drunk with the Holy Spirit, is what he said. And then he said, drunks fall down. And so everybody started falling down all over the congregation. And I'm just going, you are crazy. No, I don't think he's crazy. I think he's full of a devil to tell people that they can be filled with the Holy Spirit and it causes them to be drunk. And near the end of that sequence, he had men and women in a pile laying all over each other in what was to be the house of God. Brethren, these things ought not be so. Somebody say amen. Amen. But he said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye and be drunken and spew and fall and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you. Turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. All of these things are written for our examples and for our learning, the Bible says. Matthew 24, 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. When, if you remember a couple of years ago, several people were making big noise on the internet. They were writing books about supposedly there was going to be this astronomical event and it did happen where they would have these four blood moons. And what happens with a red moon is that it comes right before a lunar eclipse. And a lunar eclipse is where the earth passes between the moon and the sun. The moon gets its light from the sun. The sun shines on the surface of the moon and here's what we found out about the moon when we sent guys to the moon and they brought moon dust back and they examined it and they said it's mostly glass. Very fine glass particles. That's why it's so reflective. Okay? So, but what happens is the moon passes in front of the, the earth passes in front of the moon and so for a while before the moon is completely darkened, the sun's light is passing through the earth's atmosphere and it's a, the atmosphere is acting as a filter 
to filter out some of the light of the, of the sun. And what you see on the surface of the moon is basically it's reflecting back to us red. So the moon looks red and they call that a blood moon. And they uh, knew that we were going to have four of those within a, a short period of time. And so people were making big noise about this, saying this is going to accompany the tribulation. It's going to start these four blood moons and all of these things. They sold a lot of books. They sold a lot of videos. But nothing happened. They lied about everything they said was going to happen. They lied about it. Now, they didn't actually afterward come out and say... Oops, we were wrong. And they kept all the money that they made off selling the books and videos about these things. And what they were doing, they were saying, see, the Bible talks about the moon's going to turn to blood. But it also said that the sun would be darkened. At the same time, they left that part out. Because... Yeah, the moon did turn red, but it's because the sun was lightened. But in this case, the sun is going to be darkened and the moon is going to turn to blood. So it can't be a lunar eclipse. Can't be. It has to be something uniquely different than that. And that's something they left out of all their books and videos that they made. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And then the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Um, look at Revelation 6 because that is this event here in Revelation 6. Revelation 6, verse 12. This is the opening of the seals. God has the book in his right hand. The only one worthy to take that book and to loose the seal, sealed with seven seals. The only one worthy, come on in. How you doing? Good deal. The only one worthy to take that book is Jesus. He's the one worthy to open the book, loose the seals thereof, and he starts loosing the seals, first four seals. He has four horses and their horsemen, their riders coming out. When the sixth seal is open, that's in verse 12, and I beheld when he'd opened the sixth seal, no, there was a great earthquake. God said that he was going to shake the earth and the heavens, and this is that event. There was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. In verse 13, the stars of heaven fell onto the earth. So I can remember years ago when, when Steve asked me that question. How does that work? If the stars all fall to the earth, what, are, what is that? What is, how is that going to happen? And I said, Steve, in the Bible, stars are angels. And I said, one third, according to Revelation 12, of the stars are going to fall to the earth because those stars are actually angels. And he went, huh. And he didn't ask me no more questions after that for several years. But... Um, Verse 13, the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. In other words, the figs aren't ripe when she is shaken of a mighty wind. By the way, I bought some fig preserves the other day. You can't have any. Okay, maybe you can have a little bit since it's your birthday. And it reminded me of our people, our grandfather. Our, he had a fig tree, and Mima would make fig jelly, fig pres Oh, I love figs. So anyway, but as the um, as the fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken up a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll, 
When it is rolled together and every mountain and every island were moved out of their places and the kings of the earth and great men, the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. By the way, you have a lot of rich people, very wealthy people, who are either building their own luxury bunker or are buying. There's a guy that, can, that bought an old missile silo underground and he's converting it to luxury bunkers. No kidding. With swimming pools and libraries and medical facilities and all kinds of nice things for very wealthy people to hide in. For some, when some great catastrophe happens they're going to try to hide in there and that's what you see in your bible they hide themselves in dens and in the rocks of the mountains they say to the mountains fall and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to what stand it's exactly right uh, Luke 10, 18, he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Remember that when lightning struck that cedar out at our house? We had a big tall cedar right at the edge of the driveway and lightning struck it. I mean, we heard it. And I was brushing my teeth and I went, what was that? And we walked outside and we could smell the smell of cedar everywhere. And there was like a fog on the ground and lightning had struck a large cedar and pieces of that tree were probably thrown a hundred yards away. I mean, it was powerful. What happens is that when lightning strikes that tree, the heat from that lightning is so hot, it, it immediately turns to steam. Any water inside that tree and it explodes and blew stuff everywhere. Like you see in that picture there. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Um, when Hitler created his SS, Schutzstaffel, there are two S's that were designed on the uniform look like lightning strikes. They were done deliberately that way. Harry Potter has a birthmark on his forehead of a lightning strike. Isn't that interesting? He had a mark on his forehead of lightning. And lightning is a symbol in the Bible of Satan falling from heaven. 2 Thessalonians 2, turn there. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians... Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2. If anybody happens to have any Tums or Rolades, bring me some after Sunday school because I'm going to need it. My stomach's burning for some reason. I have indigestion. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Let, no man dis, uh, let me go back to verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. This, I believe, is the rapture, the translation of the church. That's the gathering. He's going to gather us together to be with Him. He said that to be not soon shaken. Remember what happens to that fig tree. It's shaken. God's going to shake the earth and the heavens together. That you be soon not shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, is that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come what? A falling away. So here Paul in Galatians 5 telling us to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. 
And he's telling us that, I believe, in our day for a reason. Stand in liberty. Who wants, does anybody here want our country to be turned into a socialist nation? Then for the sake of heaven itself, don't vote for Bernie Sanders. He is an admitted socialist. And he swears that if he becomes president, he will socialize this nation. So you have a young lady that had a vote for Bernie Sanders. She was holding a sign that said she had $250,000 of college debt to pay for. And they asked her, why are you voting for Bernie? She said, because he's going to clear my college debt for me. No, he's not. We are. And it was, they asked her what she studied, and it was some ridiculous thing that she will never be able to get a job with. Never. Why did she take that class then? Why did she get $250,000 in debt with a college degree that she would never be able to get a job with? But she wants us to pay off her college debt so she doesn't have to. She made unwise choices. Let me show you, go to Matthew 25. Look at there, I turned right to it. Seriously, does anybody have any Rolades or Tums or anything like that? You have it. You're good. Oh, that's perfect. You know, Tums are made in St. Louis. Thank you. Matthew 25. Give me a minute. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise. Five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, took no oil with them. Why wouldn't they take oil? Because they're foolish. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, must have been before daylight savings time. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Now, some would say it would be a sin for the wise not to give their oil. It would be wrong. Jesus wants them to do that. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. That's what he said. So turn to um, Proverbs. The book of wise sayings, book of wisdom. Proverbs chapter, let's see, I think it's one. Yeah, look at verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, and let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. 
And let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us and let us all have what? One purse. Does that work? When everybody has one purse, everybody has the same bank account, everybody's equal, everybody all draws from the same pot. So they tried this. The, um, they did a documentary on the hippie generation of the 60s and how they all formed these communes. And everybody had, you're, you're from Russia, right? So communism didn't work too well. They tried it in the 60s in America with the communes. And everybody said, we're all going to have the same, everybody's going to be equal. We'll all enjoy the same benefits of everybody's labor. So, some would go out and try to sell in town what they had raised as far as crops were concerned. And they would bring back the money or whatever they could trade with and then everybody would eat and enjoy the blessings of the commune. And they noticed that some decided not to go work that day, but to sit and smoke the community marijuana and play songs, while others went out laboring. And when they would come back with the fruit of their labor, they would sit and enjoy it. And they would ask them, why didn't you go out and work today? Well, I wanted to smoke the community marijuana and play music. And by the way, I slept with your wife today. Because that was another thing that they agreed that they would share. Everybody would share one another's wife. And everybody's supposed to not be jealous over that. So here's a man who's having to wait while another man sleeps with his wife. And he's not supposed to be upset or angry about this. And it didn't work. And pretty soon, because some of the guys that went out and worked, they didn't, they went out and worked and brought in and everybody else stayed at the camp and smoked the community marijuana and slept with each other. So while the guys that went out and worked, worked, when they came back, they found out others didn't work. So they said, well, why should I work? And everybody eat what I brought in. Why don't I just sit and smoke the community marijuana and sleep with everybody's wife? Somebody else can go out and work. And so after a while, nobody went out and worked. Nobody brought in food. And they started getting hungry. And they started fighting amongst themselves. It's my day to enjoy my wife. And pretty soon the commune fell apart. Because nobody did anything and people were starving to death. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And our forefathers knew this. Our forefathers said, let each man. In the fact, the Bible says, let everyone go out and work. Even when it comes to salvation, the scripture says, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Your own salvation. So the five foolish virgins didn't do that. 
when they came to the five wise and they said, give us of your oil, the five wise said, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with them to the marriage, and the door was shut. In verse 11, afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. They were foolish. Okay, they were foolish. So back to 2 Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you, verse 3, by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Turn to Hebrews 6, and I'll close with this, because I was told that they probably wouldn't ring the bell today. Hebrews 6, verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Verse 6. If they shall what? Fall away. And that's the same language used in 2 Thessalonians 2. A falling away. If they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put Him to an open shame. Some people just don't care enough about their own salvation. They just don't care enough. And they will fall away. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you add your blessings to your word, God, that you open our eyes and help us to see, Father, that our salvation is not anybody else's responsibility but ours. Father, help us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Help us to understand, God, that those who are destined to fall are going to fall. They're foolish, not worrying about whether or not their lamps have the oil in it. And to me, Father, it means that they have the word of God, but they refuse to read it or they refuse to believe it. And I pray, dear God, that you would open all of our eyes and cause us to see the word and what it means and the warnings that are in. I pray, dear God, that you would help us, Father, to receive the blessings of that word. So, Father, bless your word today. Open our minds and our hearts to it, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.